Howdy everyone, my name is Griffin Furlong. I'm a professional engineer in the state of Florida and in today's video, I'm going to walk through how to read plan and profiles. Let's dive right into it. The first thing that I'm gonna bring your attention to is this top and bottom portion here. The top portion is what is going to be plan view. And plan view basically shows all of the line work as if you were looking from a bird's eye view down on your project. So I would just zoom in here. Here's the plan view of the project. In this example, we are using a residential neighborhood. So here's the lot numbers one through six and then seven through 12 here. And typically with plan and profiles, the big picture here is that we are showing the utilities that are under the ground as well as the profile grade line of the road. So notice how here in plan view that we have the different utility pipes and those are denoted by the WM and the RM. So the WM is the water main here that is supplying uh, water service to these homes and the RM is the reclaim main. So the reclaim main is being used for irrigation purposes. So if I were to follow this water main along the profile here, Notice how there's some call outs calling it a six inch PVC water main and we can identify some of these services. So each of these little water services are serving the individual lots of the project. Notice how along the water main there's also a fire hydrant assembly. And then if we look at the reclaim service, we can see the sleeves that are crossing under the road. So since the reclaim main here is on this northern portion, there has to be a sleeve here under this road for the reclaim service to extend across the roadway. What you can also find here is the sanitary service lines. So we have the sanitary main along this profile here. It's always right at the center line. And then we have some manholes denoted by manhole number 141 right here. Notice that this roadway has three different utilities in it. We have the water main, the reclaim main, as well as the sanitary line right here. Now, in order to showcase what's actually going on throughout this road from a three-dimensional perspective, we capture this by using plan and profiles. So it's essentially like you're taking this bird eye view, the street, and you're flipping it over on an axis and see this plan and profile here of everything that's going under this road. So again, as I make my way from this connection in the road and go down here, so I'm going down the road and all the way through it. This plan view corresponds directly to what's happening along this profile of the roadway line. Typically we cut plan and profiles along the center line of the roadway, but sometimes you can cut profiles of the edge of pavement or a curb line. But general practice is that it's usually the center line of the road. All right, so I'm zoomed into this profile here and I just wanted to kind of make one thing clear again is that this PGL here of this roadway, which is denoted right here of this black line. So this red line here that I'm highlighting, that is the profile grade line of that roadway. So that is the very center line of the road. And just to kind of make it clear, that line corresponds directly to this line right here, which is the center line of the road. And notice that that center line of the road has stationing. So this stationing helps the contractor and surveyor know exactly where to stake these utility services, as well as the curb, the stormwater, the curb inlets. So this stationing has a purpose when we're out in the field. So watch how this alignment here corresponds directly to the plan and profile. So I'm gonna go here and there's a station of two and that should correspond directly to this stationing of two down here. So now that we have an understanding of what we're actually looking at, let's dive into what is in a plan and profile. So I know that this can seem very overwhelming, but let's just break it down by each component. So do you remember how we were looking at the plan view and we saw that there was a water main, reclaim main, and a sanitary service line? Well, those are drafted in here and we can tell by this by some of the labels. So here we have the drafted view of the water main and the reclaim main. So these are the mains that are on the opposite side of the road depicted here. Now let's kind of identify what else we have going on here. So we have the six inch PVC water main, and then let's try to identify, I'm gonna color code these. All right, so we found the water main. I'm gonna color code that as blue, and then I'm gonna color code the reclaim main. Let's try, try to identify 
What else is going on in here? So here we have the four inch PVC reclaim min denoted by the pink. And then last but not least, we have the sanitary line that it's directly in the middle of the road. And that's this pipe right here. So if I zoom out here again, let's see what exactly is going on. So the way that I'm looking at this is basically our sanitary service is all gravity. So this gravity line has a slope that collects everyone's waste from their homes down to the potential lift station or another sanitary gravity connection that leads to the wastewater treatment plant. But typically these developed neighborhoods, there's usually some sort of lift station that then pumps the waste to the wastewater treatment plant. So the way that I'm reading this is I'm seeing these manholes here. Let me go ahead and highlight some of these. So we have a manhole number 140 here with a rim elevation of 7846. Let's identify all these manholes here. So we have all of these manholes that are going to be installed. And again, they are these manholes are connecting the sanitary service line that's leading to the lift station. So here I've identified the manholes. And again, what's going on is we are grabbing this sanitary service down to here. So all of the waste is actually flowing through these lines to this manhole. Now it's very typical in plan and profiles to call out the linear feet of pipe. So this is 348 linear feet of eight inch PVC sanitary sloped at 0.42%. Now let's think about that guys. I mean, when we're looking at this plan of profile, things look pretty drastic. It looks like they're sloping down by a lot, right? Well, that's because plan of profiles typically have an exaggeration. And that's one of the next things that I wanted to show to you guys, just so no one is confused. So typically on these plan of profiles, you'll have a horizontal scale. So the horizontal scale is one inch equals 40. So if we were to use your little scale, you can go here in this plan view and actually scale out the, um, the proper measurement. And that measurement will be based off the one inch equals 40. Now let's go to this plan of profile. The same thing can occur. So if I were to measure anything out in this horizontal direction, one inch would equal 40 feet. Now, it's a little bit different with this vertical scale. So this vertical scale, think of it as kind of just being um, you know, exaggerated. There's an exaggeration on the scale. One inch is not going to equal 40 feet here. In this case, one inch is actually going to equal four feet. Now I'm gonna call out some other things on this plan and profile that stick out to me. Here we have the longitudinal slope of that roadway line and that longitudinal slope is going down at negative 0.32%, which again is really not very steep at all. It's a relatively flat road, but it's just enough for you know water to, to move and hit the cross slopes of the roadway. We also have some clearances here, and this is very standard in plan and profiles. So we have a clearance here of three feet between the top of the grade and the water main and reclaim main. What you also have is some station callouts. So all of these are PVIs right here. A PVI is a point of vertical intersection. What these points represent are any grade changes. And you can notice this because we have a downgrade of 0.32%. And at this very point at station 379.79, the grade changes back up to 0.32. So it's creating this sag, which is a low point of the roadway. So if I were to translate that back to the plan view, I can go to station 379. Let's try to identify that here. And I'm just gonna do a little ballpark thing here. Here's station three and here's four. So I know that this is 350. So somewhere kind of halfway here is that actual low point in the road. And that makes perfect sense here because we have these structures. These structures are the curb inlets of the roadway. So it makes sense that this is in fact the low point of the road. So what's going on here is that this road is sloping down to this low point. And from here, station like six, this is all sloping downhill here to these inlets in a longitudinal way. Now, don't forget this road is cross slope, so it has a crown. So all along the center line is actually a high point. And 
what's going on is there's a cross slope here so water can collect into these curbs and make it to the curb inlets. Now let's go back to this profile view here and let's identify what else is going on. What you also have are these elevation points so, so you can have an understanding of what elevation these pipes are at. So roughly if I were to look at this water main that we showed here it's at a rough elevation between 74 to 76. Okay another thing that I wanted to point out is that each manhole hole will have a rim elevation and an invert and again the invert is basically the bottom portion of the pipe where water is you know traveling through so here we're starting at a higher invert of 73.4 and notice how we if we keep making our way downhill the elevation drops now one thing that you may have noticed is you know here it kind of looks like a lot is going on it's pretty crowded we have these two storm pipes that are basically Basically looking like they're going through the sanitary sewer here but again we have to think three-dimensional about this so right now this looks like a problem but it may not actually be a problem so let's kind of figure out what's going on here so I'm gonna zoom in here to this point specifically and this is a pretty common QAQC practice so whenever we're looking at plan and profiles especially when they're let's say just 30% done a lot of times one common thing that we're gonna have to do is check for utility conflicts now utility conflicts conflicts is when you're going through the plan and profiles and understanding if there are any conflicts between utility services, structures, or utility pipes. Because the last thing we want to do is give out a set of plans where there's going to be major issues in the field when the contractor is trying to build utility pipes and they realize, well, these utility pipes are colliding. So what do we do here in this situation? Now this happens to not be one of those cases because we've gone through and we've made sure that we've installed bins or we've dropped storm pipe or dropped sanitary sewer to avoid these potential conflicts. We don't want structures or pipes to collide when they're built, obviously. So again, let's see what's going on here. I'm just gonna take it, take it step by step. So we're gonna have to identify what's in the profile and how that actually corresponds to the plan view. And if it gets kind of tricky, what you can always do is just draw it out. The first thing that I notice is that we have this 24 inch RCP and it clearly looks like it's colliding with the sanitary, but is it actually? Let's identify where this is in space. So we have a 24 inch RCP at invert 70.4. So it looks like it's colliding with the sanitary, but let's identify where this actually is in plan view. So if we go over here to plan view, so here in plan view, we can see this 24 inch RCP, and we can see that this one's an 18 inch RCP. So when we were looking at, at the profile view, we noticed that the 24 inch RCP was colliding with the sanitary main, but in reality, these two pipes are not even crossing. The 24 inch pipe is actually right there, and this sanitary main is right here. These two are not crossing at all. They are not crossing in three-dimensional space. So it's really important when you're looking at these profiles to understand what you're viewing in plan and how that corresponds to profile and vice versa. What you might have noticed is that this sanitary crosses the 18-inch RCP. Now, the first question I have is, well, are they colliding? How do we know if they're colliding? Well, we have to understand it in the 3D space. So let's go down to the profile and let's see if these two pipes are in fact colliding. So again, we've already confirmed that the 24 inch RCP does not even cross the sanitary. This is a non-issue. We do not care if you know this is showing being into the sanitary because we know that it's not crossing. But this 8 10 inch RCP does in fact cross this sanitary main. So how much space do we have between this top of pipe and the bottom of pipe? We have 2.2 feet. Now again, every municipality is different. Uh, not going to go into what are typical standards and what are typical clearances, but I will say that for this project, 2.2 feet was enough clearance between the top of the 18 inch RCP and the sanitary main. Let's identify if there are any other conflicts. So again, this 24 inch RCP does cross one of these mains if we remember from this plan view. So let's go back to this plan view. This 24 inch RCP definitely crosses this reclaim main here. And I'm gonna denote this as pink. So here we have this reclaim main crossing the 24 inch RCP right there. So let's see if they are in fact colliding with each other or if they have enough clearance. So let's go down here. 
So here we are showing that we have 1.5 feet from, again, this reclaim man. That's right here. And then this 24 inch RCP. I'm just gonna draw a little circle there. Everything's different colors, my bad on that, but I'm just showing you the power of profiles and how you can start checking some of this stuff. That's honestly all I have for today's video. I mean, planning profiles can be straightforward. I know that they look really hectic, especially because there's a lot going on in the profile and because there's a vertical exaggeration. I think the big key takeaways that I have is to always just understand what you're looking at in plan view and then translating that to profile view and vice versa. Promise once you learn that habit, you can better QAQC your plans for any sort of utility conflicts. And again, plan and profiles are all about showing what's going on underground and what's going on on the final grade line typically of a road or just whatever is above it. You can cut different profiles of whatever you want. Sometimes we'll cut profiles for different cross sections at property boundaries. Sometimes we'll even cut some profiles of sidewalk or profiles along a whole stormwater run. It really just depends. But in construction plans, the typical way to cut a plan and profile is of a center line of a roadway. Hope you guys learned something new. Feel free to check out my other videos that go into how to regrading plans and definitely Definitely feel free to comment below on what you're interested in learning. I'm, I definitely want feedback from others. Hope everyone has a good day and I will see you in the next video. Peace.